Hi guys and girls, Gallifrey Forever 97 and welcome to my final B&M 2020 summer review and this is the second Doctor and TARDIS from the War Games. Similar to the fifth Doctor and TARDIS set from last year, which is on the case of Anjani, this is Patrick Troughton's Doctor at the end of his era and also the TARDIS which features a new lamp. There's some little details to set apart from other releases of the Patrick Troughton figure. Before we go into detail, let's take a look at the packaging. It follows the same layout as the other B&M designs, with the front and the left hand side having a plastic window so you can see the front and side of the second Doctor and TARDIS. It tells us that the TARDIS is opening doors. These sets have no electronics. It tells it's exclusive, limited edition. You've got the TARDIS graphics and Gallifrey and symbol plastered over the box. On the left hand side, you've got a promotion image of the second Doctor and TARDIS. This image is also included on the back and also we have a synopsis for the story of the War Games, taking us from the start of the story to the end. With the package out of the way, let's take the figures out of the box and review the second Doctor and TARDIS. A couple quick notes about inside the packaging. With the TARDIS sets, you do need a screwdriver to get the TARDIS out because it's screwed into the cardboard. With the previous year sets, you have this like plastic within uh, the TARDIS which has to kind of like peel out. This time they've just used sellotape and I've seen other reviews which have to be really careful about putting this off because sometimes the paint does actually rip off. Mine seems to be fine. There's a slight plastic residue but it seems to be okay so just be careful of that when you take them out because you don't want to rip off paint applications of the TARDIS. And the interior card is a really awesome colour 3D design of the outside bit of the trial room where all the people come in and out and of course where we have to say goodbye to Zoe and Jamie. But what is a really nice display piece if you want to display it with uh, the second Doctor and TARDIS. So we'll start off with the second Doctor before I review TARDIS. So first of all, let's take a look at the articulation. Same as any standard figure, so the head can turn side to side, uh, very, very stiff though. The arms can do the full 360 round, uh, 360 swivel, at the biceps, up and down at the joint. The hands can also do the full 360. The waist can do the full 360 as well, uh, back and forth at the top, 360 swivel, back and forth at the joint, and the feet are sculpted to the trousers. On the detail now, this is based on the second Doctor from the San Diego Comic Con 2009 release, way back when, uh, when they first released this figure with the Tuna Cyberman Cyberman. Since then we've had slight tweaks to the head sculpt and paint applications, but this goes back to the original mould with updated paint applications. Which is quite nice because this figure is really from his era and the other releases are from like his other appearances in like the three Doctors and two Doctors. We'll be comparing them later. Uh, but the hair is jet black. There's some slight little uh, scuffs at the top, which I don't know is intentional. The rest of the costume features a lot of dirty washes uh, with the jacket and the trousers uh, to show off these in this kind of war setting. But the head sculpt's really great, there's a lot of block colours but you can see the edging of the details on the face which is really cool. The mouth's always quite funny because it's just like one straight line, there's no more detail on it. The rest of the costume's got a white shirt, a blue tie with uh, white dots. The handkerchief has been painted this really bright red which is quite nice. Again the jacket's had this kind of matte black uh, but with again these like dirty washes uh, which really highlights uh, the sculpting of the costume. The trousers have this like uh, squared pattern of obviously the brown sort of dirty wash uh, mixed onto the kind of grey trousers and black lining. But the main difference to make this unique as well is the cut on the leg. The original promotional images had this really cool thing where it had all these like tears around it but this is just like one block paint uh, but it's effective it works there are some more like dirty wash around it which is quite nice it says they're part of other patch chat releases so it's a little detail but it's nice uh, and of course the shoes are just standard uh, kind of dark gray where again there is a sort of murkier wash on it great opportunity if you haven't got the original San Diego Comic Con release, because obviously that's quite rare now. But it's really cool to have like a regeneration style second Doctor, I guess. So it's the best of both worlds, really. And here's the second Doctor from the War Games, mixed in with all the other variants. On the left hand side we've got the San Diego Comic Con version from 2009. And the other two are from the Three Doctors. There was also a release from the Eve of the Daleks, but it's basically the same as the Three Doctors one. And obviously in the far end we've got the two Doctors versions. Main kind of differences obviously would be between the San Diego Comic Con version and the War Games one. So the main difference is obviously sort of more of a beigier skin tone colour. The War Games t-shirt has been painted white as the other one was blue. Uh, the handkerchief has been painted more of a brighter red. Obviously more of a dirtier kind of wash. Of course this War Games version doesn't come with the recorder. The San Diego Comic Con one does. 
this one version doesn't, the three Doctors version did, and the two Doctors version didn't. So it's a bit of a yin yang uh, type situation. But it's really cool to have an evolution of these uh, figures. Uh, and obviously, again, these are quite rare figures in a way. Obviously, the two Doctors released last year was uh, pretty cool, but the other two are, are quite rare now. So it's really good to give fans another opportunity to pick up the second Doctor. Now, on to the TARDIS of this set, which again is similar to the second Doctor, has quite a few changes compared to its original release. Now, I have seen that the doors have been a bit warped on others where it's been in the packages so again when you're looking for B&M sets just be careful for that. I'm always when I go and do a B&M store I'll literally look for every one just to kind of make sure and just pick the best possible one. This uses these 70s style TARDIS that we've seen on numerous occasions, must have like five or six releases, I don't know, it's quite a lot now. Uh, I'll do a comparison at the end to a couple different ones. There's a few changes, and I say it's nice to have a second Doctor TARDIS, but I do feel now they should definitely move on to like some 80s TARDISes now. I think I've kind of seen this TARDIS enough now. <laughs> so starting from the top to the bottom really, so from the top we've got this new lamp, which is new for this model, which is a real nice change. I don't know if they'll use this again, but it's probably the biggest version of the top dome that we've seen so far. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool just with translucent plastic, uh, so I really appreciate this mould. The police box signage is different as well. So the back, left and right hand sides have the black background with the white text and the front version has uh, black text with a white dirty background which I don't know if is exclusive prop but it really sets it apart from the other tires. They could have just done a regenerate really thing and done it all but it really sets it apart so I really do like this little change. If you've got the other B&M sets for you know what we're expecting with the rest really. Obviously the same texture like the battered uh, wooden box uh, going around the whole of the tires, which is really nice. At the front obviously you've got the pull to use uh, open sign which you're never really able to open, uh, really nice detail with the handle and the key, obviously all the windows have this white background with kind of dirty wash. On the back as well you've got the massive speaker and battery compartment but again this is not electronic. And this also sees the new base uh, which is the flat packed one which they updated last year and it looks really really great. Now the colour is a bit of a mixed bag. So when the Pro Stream just first came for this it was much more of a blue and this feels more black and white which is quite cool but I would love to have seen a bit more colour in this. Comparing it to like the colour of the second Doctor we get in this. It looks really like bland. I don't know what happened, but I just feel they could have added a bit more blue to spice up a bit. I understand it's like a black and white era style TARDIS. It's a shame actually, because obviously all the other B&M sets really pop with their colours. I don't know if it's intentional or not. That's what I take it as, it's like more of the black and white era. Uh, style or as well if it was meant to be like from the war games obviously it's a bit more dustier and the, the, obviously a bit more uh, from being in that kind of war zone. I was watching the final part of the war games just to kind of refresh myself up on the story <laughs> obviously it's a 10 part story but uh, they had some like really cool like gravel effects uh, at the bottom which the Caves of Angelani set did but added mud so that would have been cool actually to have done it with this I think that would have been a really nice change but you know I, I appreciate uh, for what it is but yeah, I just feel like it could have been a bit more colourful. But just a quick demonstration, here's to open the door successfully. Uh, so you open the right one first, hopefully that clicks, oh that doesn't seem to want to be clicking in. And the left hand one just clicks like that. Also in the back you've got no TARDIS background, battery compartment and the window and screws in there. But obviously in the show you didn't see the background TARDIS anyway. To close it, uh, you pull this one forward and then you push the button at the bottom and there you go, that's how to Open the TARDIS. I find it here's a comparison to a couple other TARDISes uh, that have been seen from this B&M range. On the left, obviously, we've got the War Games version. In the middle, we've got a third Doctor TARDIS from the Monster of Peladon, the most recent uh, TARDIS release for this. And on the right, we've got the last uh, Sharda fourth Doctor release. But you can really see the contrast in colours, uh, and obviously the top domes are all different as well. It's a really beautiful design, and obviously the second Doctor one, again, would be really nice to add a bit more colour uh, of blue, but I understand it does look quite nice compared uh, to the others, who obviously will have quite different uh, spectrums of blue. This feels more of a grey than blue, to be honest, but I say, yes, yeah, so it's great we're having these releases, but I do feel now it's time to possibly move on, uh, maybe give us some 80s uh, TARDISes instead. And finally, here's the second Doctor and TARDIS, with all the other monsters that we've seen released from his era. Unfortunately, there's no obviously companions yet, uh, but it's cool to have this array of uh, season five and season six style monsters. So what do I think of this set? Well, it's a really great opportunity to get the second Doctor, which is probably one of the rarer figures to get. 
I see the third, fourth, and other figures. I've seen quite a few releases. This is a Doctor Seuss more than rarer to get figure, so it's really nice to have that, and also a variation uh, of this kind of regeneration style uh, costume, uh, which more of like a jagged look. So yeah, I, I really like this variant. And the tires is really nice with the new lamp, uh, the new changes to the police box signage. I wish they added a bit more blue to this, or if they were going to go for like a War Games variant, like really dirty it up and add like mud and stuff at the bottom. But in all honesty, it is nice to have a second Doctor uh, with her TARDIS. But again, it would be nice to kind of step away from this style of TARDIS now and give us some 80s variants. I think we've had quite a lot from the 70s ones. I don't know if they could do any more, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's time to kind of give these a little bit of a break now and focus on some others. So there you go, that's my review of the second Doctor and TARDIS from the War Games. What do you think of this set? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. That's my final review for the B&M Summer 2020 line. At the end of this video, you can check out a playlist of all the other six, including this one, uh, of reviews uh, for those sets. This year's set has been really fun, a uh, really nice variation, and I kind of to add all these uh, new B&M releases to my collection. It's going to be now <laughs> probably a couple of days of me sort of redusting, reshelving, reorganizing. If you want to see a new collection video, actually, let me know in the comment section below. I did one last year, but if you want to see one, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Bye, boys!